there Carpologist, I'm Joe and today you join me on the banks of Shearwater. I've fished here a few times, it's fairly local to me, uh, but the technique I'm using today I've only ever done once up here and it's sloppy spotting over zigs. Uh, if any of you follow me on my personal channel you'll know I've stayed away from zigs for as long as possible, it's not my preferred method so I'm a bit out of my comfort zone doing this but I know it's an extremely effective method to use in the winter. So that's what I'm going with today. When I first got here, I got the marker rod out and cast about to find out what sort of depths I was fishing at. And I'm fishing in 15 foot of water and it's 13 and a half wraps out. So not too far out, but quite a good depth of water. Um, because I don't know what depth the fish is going to be at, I've got all three rods on different depths. So the right hand rod is at 12 foot, the middle rod is at 10 foot and the left rod is at 8 foot. I'm then sloppy spotting some mix over the top of them, trying to get fish in. Uh, unfortunately, the rain started hammering down, but I persevered and uh, got out about well, a whole bucket load of sloppy spot to start with. Uh, rods are yet to go off, but I'm going to mix up a bit more and sort of every 20 minutes or so put five spots out or something. There's a heavy, heavy stock in here and this can be a very, very effective method uh, for this venue in particular. So I know that I should get one, but you never know, it is January and uh, carp don't always play ball, but that's the tactics I'm using. As you can probably see from the blinding glare from my pasty white skin, the sun has just come out. Uh, the forecast today is showers on and off and sunny intervals, so it's going to be like this for most of the day. Stay and dry at one point and then enjoy the sun the next. Uh, now the setup I'm using is super simple, I've actually gone for an inline setup. Now a lot of people use a lead clip when they're zig fishing because they want to drop the lead. Um, I've gone for an inline setup here because there's no snags, so there's not really any worry of getting in the way of anything like weed, uh, so I don't really feel the need to drop the lead and I'm not fishing super deep. My, my deepest zig at the moment is 12 foot, so I'm not too fussed about dropping the lead. But to kick everything away from the lead and avoid tangles on the cast, I've gone for a super long anti-tangle sleeve, both ends. So one of them I've tucked onto the end of the lead, so it kicks away one way, and the other end on the zig rig, I've got one there. So I've probably got five or six inches of completely anti-tangle sort of boom sections if, if it were, uh, which will stop it from tangling on the cast and just gives me a lot more confidence that the rig that's out there is presented properly and not tangled. The rig itself, I'm just using dedicated zig and floater line and then I've gone to a small size eight hook with a hair rig and the baits I'm using are from Crafty Catcher, they're called zig bites, uh, very different colours, they've got black one side and a colour on the other so the way I've set them up on the hair, oh a fish just rolled over my spot, that's good. Um, the way I set them up is because they're black one side and pale on the other. Uh, it's something that I learned from a friend a while ago, that if you think about the silhouette of a zig, anything looking at something from below is going to be silhouetted. So you put the black on the bottom and then anything coming from above and looking down it's going to see a colour. So I've got it so that black's facing down, colour's facing up, that way that whichever, whether a fish coming from below or above, they should see it, whether it's a silhouette or a bright colour. That's the theory, uh, so that's how I've got it set up and I've just been spotting over the top. And talking of which, it's probably been about half an hour since I last spotted, so I'm gonna go get a bit more bait out. It's just gone 12 o'clock and unfortunately no fish to report. I've made a few small adjustments in the heights of the zigs and I've also doubled up the zig bites on each of the hair. So it's a bit more visual, a bit more pop-up buoyancy. So hopefully the fish will home in on that a bit more. Uh, one other thing I'm gonna pick up on is how I'm fishing at uh, accuracy. So I'm using distance sticks. I marked out this morning on a marker float with the depth and the distance I was gonna fish. I cast one lead and got it right next to the float so I know the distance, clipped it up and then wrapped it out. So I knew I was fishing at 13 and a half wraps so I wrapped it out and then did that on all three rods and then did the same with the spawn. Only because I'm fishing in 15 foot of water, I brought the spawn back a couple of foot just to allow for the swing back of the lead on the actual fishing rods and the spod mix should then drop directly over the top. That's the idea. I'm not the best of spodders, so I've probably uh, baited up a very, very large area anyway. But I'm going to be putting spods out every sort of 20 minutes. I've just done a load, so I'll give it another 20 minutes and I'll probably put a bit more out. So 
I'm feeling confident. The rain is holding off at the moment. Hopefully the sun will come out again because when it's a bit warmer, hopefully the fish will come up a bit more. And people on the dam wall have been catching. Not sure of their methods, but I'm sticking out the zigs for now and hopefully they'll turn up eventually. Right, well it's time to mix up a bit more sloppy spod mix. As I said at the start, I mixed up a whole bucket load and put it all out at once. So I did a mass bait approach and hoped that uh, the fish would come in and feed on it. It didn't work that way. So I'm gonna mix up a bit more and for the rest of the day, every sort of 20 minutes or so, I'm gonna put about five spawns out over the top. Now I have made my own sloppy spod mixes in the past. I've gone to supermarket, got oats, uh, all sorts of different things from the tackle shop as well, mixed it all together but it can be a bit of a pain, and if you haven't got the time to make your own or get it fully prepared the day before, because the oats do keep on taking on moisture until they're fully swollen up, you don't want to be putting out unprepared particle, and sometimes if you don't have the time, it's not really ideal. So today I'm using a ready-made mix from Crafty Catcher. It's a sloppy spod mix dedicated for this kind of fishing. You simply add lake water, and it mixes up, goes nice and milky and cloudy. It's got all different sort of particles, different sizes in it, so it should separate up in the layers and hopefully get the fish feeding. So if some of the bits drop to the bottom, fish will feed on that, uh, but also stuff will come up to the top as well. It comes with a oil bottle in there, so it slicks up the water nicely. And then just to top it up, I'm using some Munger Cloud, sort of a sticky sweet mix, just to add into it. So really milky, stinky, smells beautiful, uh, I have to say. So I'm gonna mix up some more, and like I say, I'm gonna put about five spawns over the top of the rods every 20 minutes or so. So hopefully that will pay off. Let's get this mixed up and get a few more spawns out. come to the end of the session now unfortunately the fish haven't played ball but it is the very end of January so I wasn't expecting to have a prolific session but one or two would have been nice uh, I've been using zigs all day I tried all different depths I started at 12 10 and 8 foot I went down as low as 4 to 6 foot towards the end trying to find all the different layers and didn't seem to find any fish uh, looking on local websites unfortunately the going method at the moment as you probably expect has been PVA bags solid bags on the bottom so I wasn't really using a method that's working well on here at the moment but it was a super easy method to use it just didn't pay off on today I know it would work on another day potentially uh, but just not today the sloppy spot mix I use super easy to use just adding lake water and instantly gave you a sloppy spot mix which is what you want to use when you're doing this kind of fishing so it's super easy to make um, and I did it in smaller bulks, tried different methods, but it just didn't pay off today. So hope you enjoyed this video anyway. Uh, please like the video if you did and uh, find us on Facebook and Instagram. Cheers for watching and I'll see you again soon.